Did you know that a lot of digestive issues are caused by a potential toxin that's in all of the quote healthy foods that scientists have been telling us to eat with a fraudulent food pyramid for the longest time? Warning signs include weight gain and fatigue, digestive discomfort and stiff joints, even skin problems. Well, Dr. Gundry, a world-renowned cardiologist, explains these side effects are often mistaken for normal signs of aging because digestive issues develop usually over a matter of years and sometimes even decades. He says the damage is probably caused by these health foods and it's far from normal. The good news is you can easily help fix the problem from your own home. It's very simple. You just have to know which foods are actually healthy and which contain this hidden potential toxin. So you can go find this yourself at gutcleanseprotocol.com forward slash inspired because after years of research, Dr. Gundry has decided to release an informative video to the public free and uninterrupted showcasing exactly which foods you need to avoid. Go find that video at gutcleanseprotocol.com forward slash inspired or click on the link in the video description below. My lords, gentlemen, this is the most painful occasion on which I shall ever be called upon to address you. My first and melancholy duty is to announce to you the death of my beloved mother, the Queen. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, it is my most sorrowful duty to announce to you the death of my beloved mother, the Queen. And I know how deeply you the nation, and I think I may say the whole world, sympathize with me in the great loss that we have all sustained. I know how deeply you, the entire nation, and I think I may say the whole world, sympathize with me in the irreparable loss we've all suffered. Hey, hey, Inspire Tribe, my fellow freedom lovers, it's John Nolan here. Thank you so much for tuning in. It is Thursday, March 14th, 2024. We're healthy, we're wealthy, we're whole, we're free. Look, Christine made this beautiful shirt. Healthy, wealthy, whole, and free, my friends. Um, and yeah, sure, we are winning. I mean, I keep saying it, and I know people are like, what are you talking about? We're winning. Look at the state of the world. But <laughs> we're, we're in a whole different kind of uh, battle and war. And, you know, I look at that front. I... Um, count and I take uh, you know I take note of what happens in the spiritual world and there a lot of great things are happening what you just saw by the way just wanted to put that in the intro was something some of you might have seen or might not have seen but it's all staged it's all scripted it's it's quite bizarre that you know the the new king Charles after uh, his mother Queen Elizabeth died Queen Lizard died uh, <laughs> used a speech from a TV show from 1975. We seem to, the more we go back in time, the more we look at uh, what was presented to us in the past, and maybe we couldn't put it in the proper context. Maybe we didn't know what we were looking at. And that's why the more we revisit these things, the more truth we find because we have perspective and context. We can look at the world around us and go, shit, how did they know? It's interesting, right? Today, we want to revisit uh, a famous interview. It's, it's gotten pretty famous over the years, and, and it had a revival in the last few years. And as I said, I kind of like to revisit these things from time to time myself. I will go, for example, now I'll read a book I read five, ten years ago. I'll reread it intuitively knowing it'll. I'll be just pulled there because I know I will see and understand things in a new light because we are experiencing different things right now. So... Um, this is by a former KGB man. He defected to the United States in 1969. And you know how these things go. He was officially a journalist in, in the then uh, Soviet Union uh, under the wing, you know, under, under the, the umbrella of the KGB. And then he had this famous interview in 1984 with G, with G. Edward Griffin. And of course, G. Edward Griffin are known to many of you, author, speaker, researcher, journalist who uncovered a lot of things. Um, 
So in this interview, it's it's a long one, and we posted the link to the entire interview down below. But 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 in this short segment that we're showing you here, uh, Yuri Bezmenov, that's his name. He's talking about the four stages of ideological subversion, and I just want you to listen to that, uh, let it sink in, and see if it somehow aligns with what you're observing in the reality around us. Let's look at this together. Ideological subversion is, is the slow process which we call either ideological subversion or active measures, активные мероприятия in the language of, of the KGB, or psychological warfare. What it basically means is to change the perception of reality of every American to such an extent that despite of the abundance of information, no one is able to come to sensible conclusions in the interests of defending themselves, their families, their community, and their country. It's a great brainwashing uh, process which goes very slow and it's divided in, in four basic stages. Uh, the first one being demoralization. It takes from 15 to 20 years to demoralize a nation. Why that many years? Because this is the minimum number of years which requires to uh, educate one generation of students in the country of, of, of your enemy exposed to the ideology of the enemy. In other words, Marxism-Leninism ideology is being pumped into the soft heads of, of, of at least three generations of American students without being challenged or counterbalanced by the basic values of Americanism, American patriotism. The demoralization process in the United States is basically completed already. Uh, for the last 25 years, actually it's overfulfilled because uh, demoralization now reaches such areas where previously not even Comrade Andropov and, and all his experts would, would even dream of such a tremendous success. Most of it is done by Americans to Americans, thanks to lack of moral standards. As I mentioned before, uh, exposure to true information does not matter anymore. A person who was demoralized is unable to assess true information. The facts tell nothing to him. Uh, even if I shower him with information, with, with authentic proof, with documents, with pictures, even if I take him by force to the Soviet Union and show him concentration camp, he will refuse to believe it until he, he is going to receive a kick in, the, in his fat bottom. When a military boot crashes his balls, then he will understand, but not before that. That's the tragic of the situation. The next stage is destabilization. This time, subverter does not care about your ideas and the patterns of your consumption. Whether you eat junk food and get fat and flab, it doesn't matter anymore. This time, and it takes only from two to five years to destabilize a nation, uh, it's, what, what matters is essentials, economy, foreign relations, defense systems. Uh, and you can see it quite clearly that in some areas, uh, in such sensitive areas as, as uh, defense, an economy, uh, the uh, influence of Marxist-Leninist ideas in the United States is absolutely fantastic. I, I could never believe it 14 years ago when I landed uh, in this part of the world that the process will go that fast. Normalization is a cynical expression borrowed from Soviet propaganda. When the Soviet tanks moved into Czechoslovakia in 68, Comrade Brezhnev said, now the situation in brotherly Czechoslovakia is normalized. This is what will happen in the United States if you allow all these schmucks to bring the country to crisis, to promise people all kind of goodies and the paradise on earth, uh, to, to destabilize your uh, economy, to eliminate the principle of free market competition, and to put a big brother government in Washington, D.C., with the benevolent dictators like Walter Mondale, who will promise lots of things, never mind whether the promises are fulfillable or not. Your leftists in, in the United States, all these professors and all these beautiful civil rights defenders, they are instrumental in the process of the, of the uh, uh, subversion only to destabilize the nation. When their job is completed, they are, non, they are not needed anymore. They know too much. Some of them when, when they get disillusioned, when they see that Marxist-Lenin has come to power, the, obviously they get offended. They think that they will come to power. That will never happen, of course. They will be lined up against the wall and shot. So we said 
we've said so long, those people who are pushing all this <laughs> insanity, they will eventually be lined up and shot. So uh, this is Yuri Bezmanov. And I encourage you all, after this live stream's over, uh, we, we posted the full interview in our locals community, free to watch. Uh, if you have an account, you don't need to be a, a supporter. You just click on that link, watch it. It's very, very uh, uh, educational, informative, and, uh, you know, it's inspiring to have that kind of knowledge. To me, it is inspiring. The question is, what stage are we in? Because these stages are, and this is perhaps, this is perhaps what I love most about uh, the Slavic traditions, their way of thinking, analytical way of thinking, being able to implement the intuitive thinking, being able to implement an, an analytic thinking, and going beyond the mainstream, also into the metaphysical, into the supernatural, and putting it all into one discipline. That's why uh, the thinking oftentimes is so advanced. Uh, we're so bound by these insane mainstream rules here. And and he he, he was a brilliant thinker, that man, really. Uh, and, and I think a, a prophet in his own right. And I think he was actually sent to the world by whomever or whatever, um, to put this out there because they need to put it out there. The question is, if you look at these four stages, demoralization, destabilization, crisis, and normalization, where are we? I would say we're in crisis. Not full blown yet, but with the beginning of 2020, we've gone into crisis and we haven't come out of it. It's just changing its face constantly, right? The first crisis, the first big one of this, and this is the whole decade is supposed to be a decade of crisis, by the way. I don't think the normalization period is supposed to start until 2030. That's kind of the key. This is a decade of crisis. And of course, the bigger picture here is this is not just the United States. This looks like, if you look at this from the perspective of Bezmenov in, in 1984, you go, well, he was talking about the Soviet Union um, subverting other nations, especially the United States, ideologically. ideologically but now we're looking at uh, these trends happening in so many places in the world that you have to start asking, is this a war between nations or is there a higher, bigger hand behind the scenes that is playing everybody and going down the same path and ultimately directing every nation on earth to go down the same path? And this is really what we're discovering with evidence, not just intuition, Intuition is good, but once you intuitively see and feel something, go look for the evidence. And we're seeing the evidence that the people in power today in most nations have zero interest in the nation's best interest. Zero. Zero. They don't care about nations any longer because nations are supposed to cease uh, existing. Nations are supposed to go away. The nation state principle has been under attack for a very, very long time. We are nowhere near a, a spiritual awakening and, and uh, development currently that we could live without nation states. Nowhere near. We need borders. As a matter of fact, I would encourage every nation to make the borders much, much tighter and don't let as much craziness. And of course, today you have the digital world and that physical border doesn't do much because most of this is done in the digital world today, right? But uh, this goes to show how easy it is to infiltrate a community in with, with, with whichever means you want to use if that community has no sense of pride in itself, if it has no sense of uh, ownership over itself, and if it doesn't protect itself in any way, shape, or form, it's insanity to think that you would just let anyone in. Who does that? Because, you know, the microcosm and the macrocosm, so what, what goes for the smallest unit must go for the biggest unit. When people call for unlimited open immigration, open the borders, do all of that, you're basically saying unless you're not really, you don't really mean what you say, I will open my door of my house, my apartment to anyone who wants to come in. But you're not doing that. Nobody's doing that. <coughs> Excuse me. 
you look at those who advocate for open borders the most, they usually have fences, walls, guards, because they don't believe in that really. It's an ideological war. It's a war that that um, wants to completely dissolve everything that is uh, culturally good, morally good, ethically good. And this has been going on for such a long time. But I encourage you to look beyond the borders of any nation and look into look into all of Europe. And this is where I, I have the most insight. I can't really speak for Indonesia. I can't really speak for the Philippines because I'm not, not there. I don't have a lot of insight there. But I can tell you that Europe, Central Europe, the United States, Canada, have been absolutely 100% ideologically subversed. 100%. The question is, what are we doing with this information as we're revisiting these things? And how are we actually counteracting this? Because we, as I said, this is, and, and this is my, this is not my personal calculation. If you look at the plans of those who are running this show, and as I said, I don't think you have to look to the national government of now Russia or the former Soviet Union. There's a bigger hand. And if the vehicle that suits them best is what they call communism, then they're going to use that. Until that doesn't work anymore. And then they're going to use something else. They don't care what the vehicle is to bring about what they want. <clears throat> this is not about nationality. This is not about one nation being in charge anymore. This is about a detached, technocratic, insane, small group of entities that most likely isn't even human. Taking complete ownership and control over every aspect of human life. By all means necessary. However... Here's a caveat. Apparently, they can't do it without your free will. And this is what, what throws people off the most. Apparently, we need to know all these things. We need to be told. We need to be shown. And by not opposing it enough or by not going against it enough, they carry on. They consider that consent. And it is informed consent. Like Jean-Claude Juncker, the former... Uh, president of the EU Commission said many years ago, he said, you know what we do when we want to do something, something that we kind of know is crazy? We put it out there. We put it in the press. We put those ideas out there. And if there's no outcry, if there's no scandal, if there's no, nothing going on, we keep going and we keep pushing until it's irreversible. This is how they do this, but they have to put it out there. And the problem is that we in our minds have been taught to differentiate between what is the news, what is entertainment, what is fiction, what is a novel, what is a movie. And the truth is there's no difference between any of these fields. They project their vision through whatever medium they want to because they know what the true meaning is. And only you and I believe that fiction means it's not true. Let's look at some of these uh Actually, let's look at some of these definitions here and show the word fiction. And I, I looked this up at uh, ETIM. So it's the, the science of the origin of words is etymology. So this is etymonline.com. And um, I look the word fiction up because so many people tell me when I tell them about a movie or a show, they go, well, this is just fiction. Okay, let's look at what fiction means. This is from the early 50th, 15th century. Fiction, that which is invented or imagined in the mind from old French fiction, dissimulation, ruse, invention, fabrication. Now listen to this. And directly from Latin, fictionum, uh, as fashioning or feigning, noun of action from past part participle, stem of fingere, to shape, form, device, feign, originally to net, form, out of clay, to shape, form, device, right? Well, that's exactly what they're doing. They're shaping, forming a reality. That's what fiction is. Bringing it from the mind into matter. That's what they do with, that's why these movies are not really, they could be considered predictive 
uh, news for the future. So we need to stop differentiating because they don't. Whether something comes from Hollywood or it comes from a pop star stage or it comes from the oh so serious news, it's all the same to them. Let's look a little further. What, what else we find? To entertain. Okay. To keep up, maintain, to keep someone in a certain frame of mind. Keep someone in a certain frame of mind. From old French, hold together, stick together, support. Let's see uh, here. Sense of have a guest is late 15th century. To allow something to consideration, take into the mind. Take into the mind. That's what they do. You think, and we were taught to think, oh, this is just a song. This is just a movie. No. We have to completely learn thinking in new ways. Everything that is projected onto you is a vision that is supposed to come to fruition in our reality. So in that sense, my friends, everything is a psyop. And the reason why everything is a psyop, because nobody is um, nobody comes out and says, here, I have created this movie. My intention was to put this image in your mind in order to manipulate you to believe what I put in your mind and in order to project this image onto the field so it comes to fruition in our physical reality. Because if they did, that would be full transparency, right? They would come out and say, this is why we created this movie. This is why we created this pop song. This is why we put these frequencies in the music. They put the information out there, but you have to find it. You have to put the pieces together. Nobody, nobody said they need to put it in a coherent way. Nobody said that. There seems to be a spiritual principle at work here because it's all spiritual. This is all spiritual. That says that you need to consent and you cannot be ultimately forced so what happened? Remember this? The juice? No guns were pointed at anyone's head. Maybe, maybe, we don't know. I wasn't there. Maybe in China, maybe some other places. I don't know. But it wasn't. But here's, I want to I want to take the example of 2020 and the, those years as a deeper understanding of this ideological subversion. This is a worldwide scenario. And there were a few nations and a few leaders very notably in africa actually that straight off course and didn't play along they all met the same fate they were all removed and killed but what that tells us is that this subversion and this massive operation of demoralization destabilization crisis and then normalization is a worldwide operation. It's not Russia against America. It's not China against the world. Because the Chinese were subjected to the same. The Russians, same. The reaction was the same. And today, all these nations that are supposedly fighting each other in so many ways are all on the same page and on board with the same massive changes that are supposed to happen in May at the World Health Organization, the World Health Assembly, where they will implement the necessary legal framework they want to that will allow them to bring this to the first worldwide legal system. And people don't understand that this is really what's happening at the World Health Assembly. They're establishing a legal framework that will allow them to dictate a set of course or a, a course of action when they determine that there is a crisis it will benefit them financially it will benefit them politically and it will put the whole world 194 nations under the thumb of one unelected organization sitting in geneva switzerland that's the that's the goal we're just a few weeks really away from this and when and these representatives that are negotiating the uh, new pandemic treaty and the amendments to the international health regulations. It's a lot of boring stuff that really isn't that boring if you look into it. 
they all are on the same page. They're not fighting there. In interestingly enough, there are a few areas in the world where they're not fighting. You go to Antarctica, the Treaty of the of an Antarctica, they're not fighting. They're all on board. You go to the World Health Organization, they're not fighting. They're all on board. So the same nations that are freaking apparently bombing each other and have huge disputes with each other and talk about nuclear war through the media every day are on the same page when it comes to one of the most subs, one of the most consequential changes that could happen in May that the world has ever seen. People don't understand how deep this goes. And so the, the key point that we need to understand here is that we are truly not dealing as the right or the left or the whatever wants to believe you that we're dealing with old school nation warfare here. It's, it's, it's a show, it's theatrics. Of course, the, most of these politicians actually believe in it. They at their level believe in that. And there is a legitimate threat at their level. Yeah, you can have, you can have even tanks and, and, and rockets being shot at, at each other and still those two nations are not really at war. Guess what? Over the last years, guess where the Ukrainian army was getting their diesel? Who were they buying it from? Yep, from the Russians. Explain it to me like I'm five years old. I am... We are the Ukraine, and we are at war with Russia, and we are pulling the whole world into this, and we're telling everybody that this is the worst enemy and aggressor ever, aggressor ever, worse than Hitler, worse than everybody else, right? Let's talk a little mainstream history here. And then they're buying their diesel from the Russians, and the Russians are selling to their Ukrainian army the diesel. E How stupid are we? How insane is that? Of course, that's the game that they have been playing for such a long time. And the reason why this information, the reason why I want you to watch this interview and go back and study these things, because it will start, it will start inspiring your mind to think different thoughts. You have to think differently. This is not just about looking at information. You have to start observing reality in a completely different way. And you will see that the dots connect everywhere. It will mean to question so many things in your life, in all of our lives. It's not easy. This pursuit of truth is not easy, my friends. I put a quote out there yesterday. Something that came to me as a clear thought is, at some point, we all have to decide that the truth is more important than anything else. Why these lies that we often tell ourselves might make us feel comfortable in the moment, the truth will set us free forever. And if we don't dedicate every day to the exploration and embodiment of truth, which will ultimately set us free and bring us to the best possible outcome ever, we have lost. But it means that we might have to acknowledge and admit to ourselves that we were wrong on many fronts and that we believed a fairy tale, that it was comfortable to believe that fairy tale, that it felt good to be on this big team that cheers for something that ultimately wasn't true, that it was easy to be in the narrative because everybody else was too, and it somehow connected us. People have said, that as horrific as the events of 9-11 were, and they were, you don't, it doesn't matter whether you believe the fairy tale that was sold on TV or whether you have gone deep down a rabbit hole, rabbit hole and discovered much of what has really transpired that day. The, the tragedy of the, and, and the real suffering of the families and the deaths, most of that, most of that, not all, but most of that was very, very real. So, but, but, but what most people have said after 9-11 was the day after 9-11, September the 12th, was the beginning of an incredible period in America, a unification. People got together, uh, party lines didn't matter, religions didn't matter as much. Of course, you know, it was, the Muslims weren't looked, looked at very uh, 
upon very kindly, but it was a reunification. But the truth is, and unfortunately, we, we have to acknowledge this now, it was based on a false premise. And the unification was inspired through all these images and through all the, these theatrics, not to bring the country to more harmony, to a better way of life, to better policies. It, it was only there to bring them on team war, team Patriot Act, team more surveillance, team Big Brother. That's what this was aimed at. And we need to take that power back. We need to take self-ownership, bring it back to our lives, over our thoughts, over our minds, over our beliefs, examine everything. Because we don't have much time left. The, the apparatus that is driving this ideological subversion and the PSYOP is very, 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 very sophisticated. And the advantage that they have is they've been at this for so long. They've passed this on from generation to generation. They never had to deprogram. They were always in that. Versus us who had to find the truth, deprogram from the lie, heal the trauma. And we're still doing it. And now we have to create a vision that is much more powerful. But we can because we have something they don't. That's what they envy the most. That's what they're after. We have the human spirit. We have the divine spirit. Just simply housed by a human experience right now. But this divine eternal spirit is our creative energy. It's what makes us so in, so incredibly special. And yes, we are special in that. And that's what they're after. That's what they want to harvest. It's consciousness that they want to harvest. All this, all this madness, all this poisoning, all this crap that's going on is for one reason and one reason only, to bring about a, a, a technological system that will harvest consciousness and direct it in the direction that they want it. Imagine a plan devised thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago, put into action and, and followed meticulously, refined, changed, altered, but always followed. Ultimately, we're all going in that direction. And that's why I say, please examine one thing clearly. When you really, when you are currently of the belief that there is a political savior figure out there, ask yourself, is that political savior figure truly walking in a different direction than all the others? Because there's either a, an authentic, a natural, a spirit-driven future, or there is an artificial, technocratic, AI-driven future. Both cannot exist in the same space at the same time. It does not work. So you have to ask yourself, if you believe in this political savior figure, are they walking down a different path? Are they actually, from a fundamental standpoint, believing in something natural, authentic, and truthful? Because right now, I don't see that political savior figure that is fundamentally walking down a different path or even expressing a fundamentally different picture. Because guess what? <laughs> I don't care if it's globalist AI or nationalist AI. You, you What, you want to call it the patriot AI and that makes it different? It's the same shit. If that's the way it's easier sold in the United States and that's the way they're going to do it. And so I, 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 I ask you to bring back the ownership over your thoughts fully and be inspired enough to think for yourself fully and let go of every last box, belief box, and just look at the facts as they present themselves to you. That's what we have to do. And that is ultimately the most liberating, the most freeing thing we can do. This is how we get healthy, wealthy, whole, and free, my friends. We have to fully take back our mind, we have to fully take back our hearts. We have to fully take back our spirit and embody it and own it. There's no other way. And we're all, we're all in the becoming of this. We're, nobody's there. Nobody's fully awakened. There's no such thing.
We're all in the becoming stages. But let's not stop. Let's not say, oh, this far and not further. Let's get to the truth. We have little time left, and we fully need to focus on that. That needs to become the focal point of our lives. Nothing can be more important than that. We have a deadline. At least it's a line in the sand. It's a very strong line in the sand. And as you can tell, our opponent clearly looks at that deadline uh, with high intensity, 2030. It's very important to them. It's like the, that's the one they, they don't want to move. They moved other things, but that's the one they don't want to move. And apparently they can't move it. There's theories as to why they can't move it, but who cares? Maybe it's good that it puts the pressure on us. Maybe it's good because it keeps us focused. Maybe it's good because it keeps us fully invested in this. There is no normalcy right now, so stop looking for it. Be in nature. That is natural. Be with your family. That is natural. Be in joy. Be in song. Be in prayer. Be in meditation. All of this is natural, but there is no societal normalcy. There is nothing you can go to that will bring you comfort from outside of you currently in this society. There is no such thing. The old normal is gone. It died in 2020. Whatever was left of it is gone. It died in 2020. There's only an illusion of normalcy. It's really insanity. And people don't want to let go because they, they used to get their comfort from that place. It was a comfortable routine. It's gone. Get used to it because normalcy, it's going to be gone for a while. It's a good thing. We need to get this uncomfortable. We need to get this uncomfortable to go deep enough and to heal on all levels as individuals and as a society. It's just the way it is. It's just the way it is, my friends. This is what we're in. Embrace the moment. Love it fully. Give thanks for it because this has been coming a long time. And many, many pioneers and many, many people have invested their lifetimes. And they've since moved on. They passed on. They went somewhere else. But they invested their lifetimes without ever getting to this stage, without actually seeing it themselves. But we're here. We're seeing it. So we need to pick up where they left off, and we need to bring this home. We need to get this to the finish line. And yes, there is a finish line. It will be the beginning of something new, but there's a finish line to this war. And that, too, needs to be finally understood, that there is a victory that is possible and that will bring us to a, to a new stage of a new way. However long it takes, my friends, what does it matter? What does it matter? Are we going to be the beneficiaries? What does it matter? Is there an alternative? Is there really an alternative? Are we going to live a lie to stay comfortable a little longer versus walking down this path and seeing it through until the day we leave here. And maybe it's going to be our great-grandchildren that will ultimately really benefit from this. So what? Wonderful. But that's where my life, my life force, my energy, our energy goes into. This is what we're here for. Orion Inspire Tribe, thank you for tuning in. You mean so much to us. This is a very special bond that we share. And it's uh, it's something authentic. We together, we forged it. And we continue to strengthen it. And you're out there in the world. And you're doing your thing where you are. It's incredibly important. We're decentralizing freedom. That's why I don't want to invest in one political figure. Because it's easy to infiltrate one figure. It's easy to infiltrate one movement. But it's very difficult to infiltrate little pockets all over the world, everywhere, that take charge, take control over their little pockets, and that exemplify beautiful, authentic, natural leadership. That's almost impossible to do. All right, my friends, we love you. We appreciate you. We'll be back with you again very, very soon.